to Sarah. You are always one of my most perfect fans, and I miss you on the East Coast. Enjoy this book. I think of you daily. Love, Mark. Oh. Isn't that nice? It's a lie. Oh, well. One can dream. But anyway, I did get the two meals a day from Mark, and he has a co-author, Brad Kearns, who is um, a friend of his, long-term collaborator. Is that the right word? So I got my book. It was half the price. I don't know why, from Amazon, and it's two meals a day, and he still is a big fan of his big-ass salad, and he even has a recipe for how he does it in here. So um, yep, right there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Sisson, big ass salad. And, um, so I got it and there's no glossy pictures in it, but it's another, you know, it's another tutorial about how he does it, what he recommends, what he says. Um, I'm not too mad and I have no intentions of being too mad, but it's just nice to, um, have his book and hear his words through the type and on the page, and it's just, you know, um, Miss Joyce, who knows my sense of humor and my style, um, almost almost the most of anybody, along with Dupuis, those two are, are um, and June and Tracy, they know, they know me inside and out, so. <laughs> so, uh, Miss Joyce texted me, she said, um, well, read the first two chapters like you usually do and then send me the book. And it's like, <laughs> that's a very typical thing of me. So I have been, you know, leafing through the book. I was looking at the recipes and getting some ideas. And, oop, say hi to Freddy. That's the Fredster. That's his little place. He's usually there when I'm recording. So, um... Anyway, if you're new here, oh my goodness, if you're new here, I just dove into my love letter for Mark. My name is Sarah, and this is Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, and my last name is Pearl, so of course, you know, I take I take ownership of that saying, and um, also being 70, you know, most of us that are older have our own ways of gaining the wisdom and it's through trial and error and pain and loss and all those sort of things right that's how we get wisdom we aren't just handed here you go and they lift off the silver dome and there's your wisdom you know you just get it for nothing no 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 we've learned it the hard way and of course if you're here with me with your keto food plan um doing it however you do it that works you know that our wisdom comes from food, diet, diet claims, different diets, different pills, different organizations that we've written out checks for and in the hopes of being a skinny mini, you know, at 40, 50, 60, 70, 75, 78, <laughs> and being the skinny mini that we might never have been, you know, I often say that today I weigh less than I did in the third grade. In the third grade, my hormones and body took off and I became fully developed with all of the things that happened to a um, girl becoming a woman at nine years old and um, was teased mercilessly about it. And of course, I ate at it, which of course I became even bigger at it, right? Yeah, if, if food, you know, the, we have those fat days and we feel fat and the scale might tell us that we've gained two or three pounds and we, you know, can't leave it alone. We have to be defined by what we weigh, right? And so, you know, what do we do? We eat at it. You know, the, the thing that got us into the jam that we're in, we use and abuse because that's how we have gotten that way. You know, we eat our feelings swallow our feelings and usually um well judging from the instacart shopping that i do some people are definitely salty people salty crunch and other people are definitely sugar sometimes crunch with the cookie but oftentimes the ice cream and then the way they have the yogurts done now it you know talk about 
I, I know that I call all those energy bars candy bars with wigs. Wink, wink. But look at these yogurts with the little toppings and the little see-through thing. It, it's some, it, There's yogurt in there? <laughs> you might as well just have ice cream with the fixins, right? That's how I think of it. But then again, you know, I'm a foodie. So it's like, why even qualify some of these yogurts? Just um, get the ice cream that doesn't have lactose or or is made from a non-dairy source like almond breeze or the so made from cashew milk or something like that right so anyway we you know we'll, i'm in a good space so i'm treating food as you know it's it's a fun item i love my veggies i have a treat every now and then um because i'm on maintenance i wouldn't suggest it to you unless you're on maintenance and even then you know keep it rare and appropriate um the guy from the magician i can't think of his name but he coined the phrase well at least in my world of food <clears throat> he coined the phrase rare and appropriate now he's a vegan or he's a vegetarian and after doing a magic show um, in his book, he would talk about going home and having like six containers of raspberries or blueberries, and that would be his treat. Um, so uh, I don't know if he has eggs or chicken or fish or, or however he does his rare and appropriate, but he will have his treats upon occasion. And I know that that my boyfriend, Mark Sisson, does too. Um, you know, rare and appropriate. And defining rare and appropriate, of course, is you know, going to be your version. It's going to be, you know, definitely detailed to what it is that you like and enjoy. And, um, and that's that, you know, it's nobody else's business, but yours, what's rare and appropriate. Even Mike from Carnomad came back on and did a video and he talks about, you know, his rare and appropriate, um, restaurant that when he, when he's in that area of Texas, you know, he and his wife, Marnie, will stop there and have a rare and appropriate treat. Life is not about deprivation. And the keto food plan already gives you so many wonderful freedoms anyway, and you know that. And after being unrestricted and, you know, you choose these food plans because you want a miracle, you want a way out. And what happens is, is that, you know, the buildup, the buildup, the buildup. And if you're a person that binges, there you go, you know, because you've deprived yourself of life's bounty. For some people, a rare and appropriate thing could be an orange or an apple. And, you know, in some ways of thinking, they might call that a sugar bag, right? Because there's so many carbs and sugars in an apple, especially the honey crisp, which always sing out to me. So it could be as simple as that, or it could be something that has, you know, white flour, white sugar, and, um, and seed oils. She's making a face. But, you know, what you want as a rare and appropriate is what you want. And so my way and it's been hard earned, hence the wisdom, is to enjoy that item and and just move on. You know, I I used to, it was funny, I was so mad at Dr. Westman a couple of years ago. He was talking about a Christmas treat. And he said, have it. He might have even said, have the damn thing. And it was like at least the words in supporting having it matched have the damn thing. I'm just putting it in one little sentence. And and I was so mad at him because he's a doctor and he should, you're, you're taking us away from, you know, our strict keto, strict and structured, disciplined keto food plan. And you're telling us to go have it. And now I'm in his camp. Just have it. Life is too short. That was pre-pandemic -pa pre too. And also pre-my fall when I fell and I thought I'd never walk again which was right at the beginning of last year when the whole pandemic lockdown began. You know, I had a whole different way of thinking, but after a year of all of this, and there's no vaccines on Cape Cod, so it doesn't matter if you're 105 years old and you deserve one, 
good luck to you. You know, they just don't exist. For some reason, the, <laughs> the third oldest county in the United States and the oldest county in Massachusetts just can't get the vaccines. It's just a pipeline thing, right? It's a pipe dream thing, I say. Um, so, you know, I, I had a whole different idea, but being locked down, you know, you begin to think this could be your final act. You don't know. And so it's very important to not deny yourself a pleasure in life. It could be a bath with some new Epsom um, salts and a different flavor scent. It could be, you know, a new car. I don't know. It could be, uh, you know, a, a very grandiose sort of thing, or it could be a very simple little thing like some fresh um, organic raspberries, you know, on, on some yogurt with maybe even granola on top. I don't know. It could be simple, simple pleasures. Um, and, and it will make you feel nice. It'll make you feel elegant. It'll make you feel like you're not denying yourself, especially after what we've been through, especially after what everybody's been through in their life. You know, by the time you get to our age, an older, older person, you've experienced a lot of different losses, loss of a job, a loved one, um, money, <laughs> health issues, all that kind of stuff. And so life to me is too short to say, you can't never, nope, never, nope, never again. You can't have, no. Learning how to have a rare and appropriate and not overeat or have it turn into a binge is one of the biggest steps for me from keto to learning how to drink black coffee to getting the OMAD in a great place to enjoying a rare and appropriate. The rare and appropriate fits inside of my OMAD. It's to me, it's the clean intermittent fasting with the OMAD that is the magical part. I, I can't tell you what it is. <clears throat> But anything that's a treat that's rare and appropriate fits into the OMAD. The OMAD is defined by me sitting down with my meal and enjoying it and then it being over. And I've always told you the oral hygiene kicks in and that's it, girly. You're done. You're done. You're done. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, it's not an invitation to binge or overeat. It's an invitation to see how rare and appropriate can fit in your life, in your food plan, and become a contained thing that you never, ever thought you could enjoy. It first began with me with the keto pizza. I thought I'd have to give up pizza and that I'd never enjoy it again. Then along came the keto recipes with the keto crust and all of that. Now I do the cauliflower crust and I can still enjoy it. So that's a rare and appropriate for me. So. Just saying, don't want to see you go without and struggle in the white knuckle part of life with your beloved sacred food. It's just not worth it. Life is too short. We've been through too much. Just saying from me. Hey, thanks for being here. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. <laughs> and Mark Sisson over there. <laughs> Man's wild about me. What can I say? I'll see you here the next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.